GDP measures the value of final goods and services produced within a country, in our case Australia, within a given period of time, usually a year. Now let's look at some of these words and get a clearer view of what this definition actually means. GDP measures the value. What do we mean by value? Well, economists classify GDP in two ways. They either talk about nominal GDP, that is GDP at current market prices, or real GDP, where GDP is valued at some base price, normally prices as they exist in the given year. This enables us to remove the impact of inflation on that valuation. It's also the value of final goods and services. Now, of course, lots of goods and services are produced within the country. Some of those goods we call intermediate goods. In other words, they are contained within the final goods. Like, for instance, bread contains another good, which is uh, uh, wheat. And so uh, we, if we were to value both the wheat and the bread, we'd be guilty of double counting. So we exclude the, uh, the intermediate goods if we've valued final goods and services. And of course, because it's within the borders of the country, we have uh, recognized that foreigners buy our goods, so exports will be included, but GDP doesn't measure any imports, so we have to take those away. So, what kinds of goods and services make up GDP? Well, it's useful to place these in categories. The first category are consumer goods and services. These are the sorts of goods and services that are purchased by ordinary households. Things uh, like durable goods. These are cars, fridges, books, and things like that. And secondly, would, we would include all non-durable goods like vegetables, food products, meat, etc. The next category are goods and services that are typically purchased by other businesses. So these will be things like machines, housing, capital goods in other words, things that are useful for production. And um, this will also include the change in the level of inventories. Uh, which we'll talk about a little later on. The third category are public sector goods uh, and services, and these will include some things, things like hospitals, uh, uh, schools, uh, police services, but on the uh, capital goods side, we'll also have roads, purchase of weapons for the Defence Force and things like that. And since Australia is an open economy, uh, we also recognize that within Australia we produce goods that are exported, like iron ore, mineral products and things like that. But we also uh, export financial services, education services and, and, and so on. And, uh, but we have to exclude imports uh, because they are produced obviously uh, offshore. Now, remember that in all these goods we are only considering final goods. So if any of these goods are produced that are inputs into production, then they will be excluded. Otherwise, it's going to be double counting. So how do the national income accountants actually measure GDP? Well, the first way, notionally anyway, would be for them to go around to each factory, each office where products and services are produced and then add up the final uh, value of those goods and services. However, that's rather impractical and although some attempts are made through surveys and, and the like to do so, in general terms it's the second and third method, the expenditure and income methods, which are most commonly used. The expenditure method gives rise to total spending in the economy. 
and it is based on the idea that what gets produced, namely GDP, will also get purchased. There will be spending associated with that production. The next method is the income method and it relies on the idea that, well, in order to produce the GDP, we need factors of production, maybe labor, land, capital and entrepreneurship. And these, the owners of those factors of production, are going to be paid an income, wages, rents, interests and profits, in order to uh, get those factors to do the job of production. So this ends up giving us this three-way quality uh, which says that GDP here on the left is exactly equal to spending and that is exactly equal to the income generated producing GDP. And this identity is an important national income accounting identity uh, that, uh, that helps us understand GDP. So what makes up total spending? E is split into consumption spending or consumption expenditure and that's undertaken by households and it includes those durable, non-durable uh, goods and services that we talked about in, in the earlier slide. It also includes investment expenditure. This is the spending by businesses on capital uh, uh, like machinery and buildings. Government spending is included here as well and that includes both consumption and capital investment categories. The, in the consumption categories will be teachers' salaries, policemen and things like that, whereas capital investment will mean things like weapons, roads and that sort of thing. And finally, uh, total spending will include net exports, that is exports X minus imports M, because as we said, GDP uh, spending on imports is not spending on something that was produced within the country. So this allows us to arrive at our first important national income accounting identity. On the left hand side of this identity, we're saying that what is produced within Australia in a given year is equal to what is spent within Australia in that same year. GDP equals consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure plus government expenditure plus net exports. But remember, net exports is exports minus imports. Surely this can't be an identity. After all, in January 2015, we may very well buy goods that haven't been produced in that year at all. They were produced in an earlier year, 2014, or even earlier than that. And in fact, we may very well purchase goods that have been on shelves and in stocks uh, over 2015, which were not produced in that same year. So what about those? How can that, that surely breaks this idea that there's an identity. And what about GDP that's produced within the current year that is not bought in that same current year, but goes on and, and, and remains in stocks in, in future years? So this idea of an identity surely breaks down. Well, it doesn't, because the accountants guarantee it to be equal by defining any change in the, the, state, the status of inventories as part of investment. So when you look at the equation GDP is identical to C plus I plus G plus net exports, any uh, change in inventories uh, um, in, a, in a given year gets included within that uh, I category in the equation. Of course, actual spending as calculated by national income accountants has already taken place. And it turns out that it's really planned spending 
an understanding of planned spending, which is important for the level for, for, for the economy. For a start, the level of planned spending will determine changes in the level of employment and unemployment. For instance, if we knew what households planned to spend in terms of, let's say, refrigerators, then we could either we, we would know whether employment in the refrigerator manufacturing industry would arise or to fall. And the same, of course, implies to uh, businesses that are producing investment goods, uh, businesses that are producing exports and so on. Also, it turns out that inflation is caused when what agents in the economy plan to spend exceeds the capacity economy to supply the goods they desire. So, to end this, can we predict what spenders plan to spend in 2015, say, based on what was actually spent in 2014? Well, the answer is no. They certainly can't predict in the absence of economic theory because we need economic theory to explain the factors underlying the level of planned spending for each group in the economy. We need to know what is it that makes households spend, what is it that makes government, firms spend, foreigners spend, and so on. So economic theory is crucial for this task. Thank you.